This is Nursing Uncensored. I'm your host, Adrienne Benning, and I invite you to listen in on conversations I've had with real nurses about the crazy and wonderful lives we lead. This podcast is meant to create laughter in addition to serious discussion, and nothing is off limits. We're always honest, but we're not always safe for work. Please listen responsibly. Welcome to Nursing Uncensored. I'm here today with Sandra Payne of Sandra Payne Wellness. Hi, Sandra. Hi. Welcome to the show. I'm glad to talk to you today. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. So happy to talk to you. Nice. So we've got a few different things we're going to talk about, but um, this is all kind of under the umbrella of wellness and well-being, which is such an important topic right now. Everything going on in the world kind of on its ear. So it's nice to talk more about, you know, there are so many different ways we can take care of ourselves. So I'm really excited today to hear your take on things, um, what you do and what we can do to, or what we can pass on to the audience that they can take on for themselves as well. So um, uh, yeah. how about we start out just hearing a little bit about you. Tell us about yourself, please. Okay. Uh, I'll try not to make this super long winded. Um, <laughs> Take, do it. You, you <laughs> do whatever you want. You got the microphone. <laughs> I, um, so I, what can I say? I, I live here in Prince George, British Columbia, um, in Canada. So for, I know there's viewers from all over and, uh, I live here with my husband and our three kids and our insane dog. And, uh, I've been a nurse for 14 years. Um, like I've been registered for 14 years. I definitely haven't nursed for 14 years because I had three mat leaves and two of them were extended. <laughs> so, uh, but we moved here from Winnipeg uh, about seven years ago. And um, I, when I was in Winnipeg, I nursed uh, primarily, I started in the NICU and uh, I did about four years of full time there. And I, it was just a really, it was a rough, uh, a rough year at the end and I I had to go I had to leave and I went to the community and quite honestly when I think back to nursing school I was like it's either NICU or it's community so the fact that I went that way is not a surprise uh, I'm I'm definitely a born teacher so mm -hmm. I went into the community and I had like like a gravy job uh, it was absolutely perfect um, but of course it was a term you know <laughs> that goes yeah <laughs> lost it, so I lost it afterwards and, uh, but I had my first child after too. So, uh, and then things kind of just unfolded from there and, uh, I've always kept my toes in the NICU for sure. Um, even once we moved here, I, I went back, but, uh, community nursing and education and leading into where I am now, even, uh, as, as a wellness coach is definitely, you know, it, it's all, it's all interesting when you look back and you see how it unfolded and uh, how things have led to where you are now, right? So, And that's the beautiful thing about nursing. And I've even told students that I've worked with, you have no idea where you're going to end up. Like the job that you have that you love might not even exist yet. It might either be something that's, you know, down the road, might be something you create. It might be like a tried and true position that like, you know, has been a classical nursing job for years but there's, mm -hmm. there's no limit. So that's really nice. And the way you get to take the skills that you've picked up um, in community nursing and in the NICU, because even if you're not working with like a, a neonate population, there are still so many skills that I'm sure you learn that you take with you into community nursing, into wellness coaching. So I think it's interesting to see that progression of, uh, of roles. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I'll that with students because I think that's so important um you know I've definitely had uh, like brainstorming sessions with myself about like how I could um influence students because I think um a lot of times we you know the stage isn't the stage isn't really set accurately for them coming into the profession and um so I love that you're you know you're encouraging them to branch out and to explore and to try new things uh because there is you know, I, I always say like the, the one good thing that I have really found is consistent in, in nursing is that we can change. We can mm -hmm. move on. Like if something's not working out, then move on, like try something new. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, it's really great that you're sharing that. 
Yeah. And I just, that's why it's so exciting to get to talk to people because I don't, I don't know if I've ever had someone from Canada on the show before. So okay. you're like our inaugural Canadian. So welcome. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if you know the geography of the United States, but I'm like kind of in the middle and off to the, to the Southeast a little bit. I'm just uh, West of Chicago. I actually had to look up where Prince Charles BC is. Prince um, George. Yeah, not oh, Prince, Prince George. I'm so That's sorry. <laughs> Prince George. But yeah, I looked it up on the map. And so you're on kind of like the Pacific side of the continent, which is really cool. And I may ask, you don't have to answer this and we can cut it out if you don't want to answer it. But I was cruising your Instagram and I saw that your husband is away a lot and I saw some reference to him being out at sea. And so I'm just personally really curious um, what, what he does for a living. Yeah, he's, um, so he's actually what brought us here. Uh, cause honestly in Winnipeg we had, you know, it was a perfect little, I had a really great job, like I shared. And, uh, even after the mat leave, it, it unfolded different, but, um, he, he was a trained firefighter and paramedic and he decided that that was not uh, it was not for him long term, and so I was like, "Well, what do you want to do?" And he says, "I'm going to try and buy a hunting territory." And I was like, "Okay, sure." Like, not thinking it would ever happen. <laughs> and so yeah. it was within the year he had purchased a place here. So he has a territory that he uh, he guides people for hunting, and uh, primarily non-residents. So I mean, this mm -hmm. whole year uh, a real struggle for him with COVID, with the border, mm -hmm. yeah, everything. So, um, but then in the summertime, he goes over to the island, to Vancouver Island, and he fishes up in the north, um, the northern tip of Vancouver Island, and he fishes like um, salmon and lingcod and what else does he catch? Tuna. Yeah. Yeah. So he, yeah. he is gone. He's also home a lot. So it's a, it's like larger chunks of time and mm -hmm. he's been home pretty much this year. So that's been a very, that's been an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And I don't know much about that life, but you know, I know I've watched shows on the Discovery Channel about fishermen up in kind of like that North uh, Pacific area. So I just, I find that really fascinating and interesting. So yeah. um, interesting yeah. that, that that's brought you where you are and that, you know, that's the other thing is that, you know, to mention that, you know, he was, he was a first responder and it's okay if you decide that that's just not your thing. It's okay to take those skills. Like I've talked in another episode uh, with another nurse, it's like, you know what, nobody said that you had to take all of your skills and your talents and only do one thing with them. So um, anyway, I think that's cool that you guys, very different life than I lead. And so I have this like very, uh, like happy interest in, in the way you guys live. I think that's really cool. And your Instagram is really cool as well. So yeah, he, I think a lot of people think we have this, um, like really exciting life because he does what he does. And I definitely wear a lot of different hats and I would say, you know, it's, it's exciting in the sense that like, we're excited to do what we do every day, but <laughs> like this, you know, it's not this big elaborate glamorous life or anything. No, but it doesn't even yeah. have to be that. It just looks, it just looks like you're happy and you're doing something. Everybody has this like different little piece of the world that they're in. So I just, I don't know. I, I'm kind of a nerd for that. I like that. And seeing uh, no, how I, other people live. Yeah, I'm totally with you. Like seeing people unfold in their, like in their authentic mm -hmm. way, finding their passion and going after it. That's, I mean, that's exactly what I do uh, as a coach. Like that is yeah. what I, what I like the message I, I push out there to the world is like, you, you, you know, you're not limited. You're not in a box. You can do whatever you want to do. So. And yeah, that's kind of the heart of what we're going to talk about today is what yeah. you do and how you help nurses specifically. We, you emailed me and you said, let's talk about dealing with overwhelm. Yeah. And that's like, wow. I mean, that's a big topic. We all, we all deal with that in every aspect of our lives at times. So, um, yeah, but you have some really interesting insights in how to deal with this. So I would love to kind of start with talking about how did, you know, you do this wellness coaching. How did you get to this place of wellness coaching and how did you begin and um, kind of what, what do you do? What does that look like? What do I do? I was saying that to my husband the other day. I was like, when someone asks me what I do, I don't really know what to say because I do a lot things. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm a teacher. This is like the easiest answer that I can give to people. I'm not a school teacher. I'm a teacher of wellness. I'm a teacher of life. I'm a teacher of like unlimited potential. I'm a, a teacher of growth, 
mindset um, and believing in yourself and believing in your worth and believing in your value and chasing after everything that you want in this life and just living fully expressed in every possible way that you can. Um, so th <laughs> that's what I do. That's all. I that's cool though. That's so awesome. I am. Um, after my last mat leave, my youngest is three and I, I just couldn't go back. I had this really nagging heaviness about going back and I knew it wasn't the right step for me to return. And so I, I made a really big decision and decided to give up my position. Uh, I was the team lead of the cardiac clinic here um, in town here. And uh, I decided not to go back. And uh, that was scary because I mean, nursing is a real, like it's a very secure position, right? Like you have everything. I mean, everyone knows that. I'm sure lots of people listening are nurses. So uh, when I decided not to go back, I was then like scrambling, like, well, what the hell am I going to do? And uh, this coaching kept kind of showing up for me in different ways. And, uh, and I've always, you know, since I've been in the community, I've always been doing this sort of, I've been doing coaching with people, but I, I call it now. I said, I was coaching in a box because as a nurse, it's like, we're given these very tight restrictions about what we can do and how we can serve people. And I felt like going back into that role that I was not able to help people the way I knew I could. And so it was very, it was not aligned with what I believed uh, was true for me. And so I took this coaching program and, um, and it's, and then it's evolved since there, but I really, um, I, I knew that becoming a coach and starting my own business was going to be hard, but I also knew that it was going to allow me to, uh, to help guide people in the ways that I knew were right. Um, and not just, you know, teaching about nutrition and fitness, uh, with a little, sprinkling of <laughs> stress management, which is like chronic disease education across the board in healthcare, um, in our traditional sense anyways. And I, I know there's so much more to it because my own personal journey has revealed that to me that it wasn't just about, it is about the food we eat and the way you move your body for sure. Um, and we absolutely need ways to manage stress and to manage overwhelm and to deal with our mental and emotional wellness, but we don't spend enough time on those pieces or even on spirituality for that matter, or like our purpose in this world. Um, and emotional health is definitely, uh, like the icing for me. Like it is what I really love helping people with and talking about because that has been a huge part of my own personal journey. Uh, for nearly 20 years, I struggled with depression and nursing did not help that. Uh, it's the truth. <laughs> uh, and you know, an interesting stat is that like nurses are 50% more likely to develop de symptoms of depression than the general public. Um, and you know, what I understand about it now and trauma and like post, uh, secondary trauma is like, we're, we're witnessing all of these really, um, difficult, awful things and then we're expected to just pick up and keep going you know get on get on to the next patient go into the next room you know go change that dressing over there go start that IV. meanwhile you just sat with a family that lost their baby mm -hmm. or you just, through this big code situation you got to move on and so i uh i don't i don't really know where i was going with that thought but it was <laughs> Well, we were talking about how like we deal with all this stuff and then, you know, we're told to like handle our emotional health, but then it's like, well, how do we do that when we have all this big stuff that we're dealing with? And then, and then on top of all of that that you've just described, then you have to go home, make sure your kids are ready for school the next day, you know, be a partner to your partner and be a daughter to your parents and like all of these other roles that we play. And when are we finding time for, for ourselves? You know, it's that whole, um, can't pour from an empty cup thing that everybody. Oh, absolutely. Has. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, I think back and I, uh, you know, the question of like when I was experiencing overwhelm and I, I, I was like, there's no particular time. Like I've been overwhelmed for most of my life, mm -hmm. um, having depression and dealing with all of the spiraling uh negative thoughts about myself and just really clawing for any kind of belonging any kind of you know love and acceptance and then moving into i was in an abusive relationship for a number of years so that just you know again overwhelmed in there and and unprocessed really like i really didn't uh process or heal or deal with any of that stuff and then moving into 
where I was also bullied in the, in the nursing education program. And then I became a nurse and I'm exposed to all of this, you know, really toxic. Uh, and it wasn't all, I mean, it wasn't all bad, of course, but a lot of toxic situations and toxic personalities. And I just, uh, I think it came to a point where I just I couldn't deal anymore. Like I was just irritable. I was frustrated. I was angry with everything. I was really snappy with my, with my kids and my family. And it just, everything was so like at a head and it was, there was nothing left. Um, every little thing spilled me over. Mm -hmm. So it's like my cup was empty, but it was also full. Like it couldn't, it couldn't take any more. It was um, full even, of the wrong stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't know how to deal with it. I really didn't. I was not taught any kind of, um, healthy mental, emotional, uh, coping throughout my life, even though even having the diagnosis of de depression and, you know, being treated, treated with, you know, rabbit ears medication, but not really treated. And, uh, so I didn't have any coping tools and it just, uh, you know, I think I just got to a point which I would consider to be my rock bottom where I just couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. A lot of us find ourselves in these positions of feeling this overwhelm all the time. And we wonder, you know, how did I get here? But it's such a slow erosion mm -hmm. over time. And, yeah. you know, sometimes there's like one pivotal, you know, moment that kind of makes us say, okay, enough is enough. But for a lot of us, it's just that constant wearing down, you know, and uh, I feel like it, it's easy to say like, oh, I, I want to feel better. I want to get my stuff together. Uh, but it's not always easy. You know, you can identify like, I want to feel better. I want to be more productive. I want to be happier. But how do we do that? You know, like, how do we do that when we're already feeling so heightened about everything? When everything, as you said, made your cup pour over the edge. And mm -hmm. that's exactly the feeling. Like, that's what I feel like sometimes where it's just like, I'm bubbling over. And when it finally bubbles over, it's kind of like a mess. And then I feel embarrassed of how I reacted or whatever. So, yeah. so yeah, where do we start? Where do we begin? I think, um, well, for me, it, it, the first step was slowing down. Uh, I had to, I had to take a step back and I know that's not realistic for a lot of people. Um, and it wasn't really realistic for me either. So it wasn't you know, that lightly that I was able to step away. It wasn't like I was just, you know, handed a silver platter and said, here, do whatever you need to do. I, it was, it was challenging, but I knew I had to do what was right for me. And so, I mean, listening is, is the first thing, like, what is, what is true for you? What, what is, like what is you saying about what you need in your life? And um, so that's, I mean, one of my tips that I, I share for overcoming overwhelm, but honestly, it's like four steps to overcoming so many things. Overwhelm is just one of them, but um, it's really listening and taking the time. We leave the, we lead these incredibly busy lifestyles where we're just go, go, go all the time. And we are always striving for the next thing. And, you know, especially if we have families it's just this added it's just it's constant right and so when do we ever take a time to sit and listen to ourselves because what i understand now is just i mean every answer we're looking for it's we have it we have everything we need every decision that you need to make the answers are within you everything that is missing or feels like it's missing in your life it's the answers are all here everything that you need is all here but we need to stop and listen so, I mean, the first step is really just getting quiet and it doesn't have to be this, you know, 45 minute long meditation every single day. It doesn't have to be like that because I know that if I suggest that to people, they're going to be like, yeah, great. Good for you. You have time, but I don't have that time for that. Right. And so I say five minutes a day, five minutes a day, and then commit to it because this is my formula. I always tell people is like decide, commit, and then show up. So we see things where like, I want to do that. I think that sounds really great. She's got a good point. I need to listen to myself and figure out what it is that I need. Okay. You've made a decision now commit to it. Say I'm going to do five minutes a day for, you know, what's reasonable. Let's say two weeks, let's say three weeks. If you want to go with the traditional like Kundalini formulas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so 40, 40 days. Is that what you said? 40 days. Yeah. 40 days. So, I mean, and that's five minutes, five minutes of just sitting quietly, like telling your husband, I need you to keep the kids out of here for five minutes. That's it. Five minutes. Like that's nothing really. 
sitting for five minutes with your eyes closed and just listening, feeling, just whatever comes to the surface without any kind of judgment, you are likely to have a spiral of thoughts. It is likely going to be like your grocery list or what you have to do that week or things that you forgot to pick up for the kids or whatever it is. Just sit with it. Notice it. Sometimes when we get into like a little bit more advanced meditation, and I, I don't mean advanced as in like it's hard, it's just with a little bit more guidance for ourselves, is that we notice those thoughts and then we say, okay, let's just put it on the shelf and come back to me. Come back to me, keep coming back to me and just feeling what's inside. I, I often, when I'm talking, I close my eyes when I'm, you know, and I'm trying to find an answer for people or I'm trying to find, it's because when I close my eyes, I, I eliminate everything else in my environment, right? I, I'm completely just tuned inside because I don't have all this fraction. So five minutes sitting quietly by yourself. Um, and then I would suggest, you know, if you can get 15 minutes is to spend the next 10 minutes after that writing, writing whatever it is that you want. It doesn't have to be this structured um, way of journaling. I think there's a lot of conceptions about um, journaling that limit us. And so it doesn't have to be proper grammar, proper spelling, mm -hmm. anything like that. Right. literally you are just pissed right off. Just write fuck across your page like 20,000 times. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter. You need to write to get it out. Um, some people talk too. So, I mean, that's yeah. another form of it, but writing is <laughs> very cathartic to, to get that stuff out. So when you sit quietly, you're allowed to, you allow yourself to tune in and listen. And then writing is like this extension of yourself, putting it onto the page, whatever needs to come out, whatever answers need to be revealed will be revealed in that journaling session. Like as woo woo as that sounds, I know it sounds, but it works. It is no, so good. But like I've had, I've had these, I call these brain dumps. And this is yeah. what I do. I have these brain dumps where I'm just like, I feel scattered. I can't focus. I have all this stuff rattling around in my head and I just need to get it out. And sometimes it's true what you're saying. It, 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 it doesn't sound that woo woo y to, to me because I've had that experience where like, I'm just like free journaling, just like writing stuff. And I realize that I keep, I keep coming back to the same thing. Like I keep coming back to the same subject or the same problem or the same irritant and I, it does reveal to me what's like, because I've got all this stuff that I'm trying to pay equal attention to. And of course, there's no way I can. But yeah, sometimes when I'm doing these brain dumps, these, these journaling sessions, I do kind of subconsciously reveal to myself what it is that is most pressing on my yeah. to-do list. So yeah. I think, I think that's really legit. And I bet there were, are a lot of people that are going to listen to this that are like, yeah, that's exactly my experience. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not that isolated, even though maybe we don't talk about it or think about it in this way. Yeah. It seems so simple, right? Like I, you know, I've said to people like, do you want to see my four steps? And I send it to them. They're like, well, duh, <laughs> like, duh. Yeah. But, but like, how often are we really doing it? Exactly. Yeah. It's one thing to know something. It's another thing to implement it into your life. Mm -hmm. And so I also will say to people like, you know, I get a lot of this, like meditation doesn't work for me. I can't turn off my mind. Um, I can't calm down. Okay. First of all, there's no rules here. You just sit quietly with your eyes closed. That's it. Mm -hmm. You have to shut your mind off. You don't have to do anything. Just sit and listen. That's it. If all you hear is this stream of thoughts in your head, just notice it because it just, your body wants you to hear, it wants you to hear the messages. And so a lot of times people too, they'll say meditation doesn't work for me. And I'm like, well, how many times have you tried it? And they'll be like, well, I did it once or twice. Well, okay. It doesn't, right. If you wanted to lose weight, would you get on once or twice? No, right. You have to do it on a consistent basis. So keep giving yourself a routine and committing and then showing up for that. On a, like maybe it's not every day for you because that's not reasonable, but maybe it's three days out of the week, right? Maybe it's, Maybe it's five days. Maybe it's just one day, but one day is better than nothing at all. So, and I mean, I don't know what you would say to this, but even sometimes for me, hold on, I have an itch. This is the time of year where I go from having like the skin of a teenager to like the skin of a 70 year old woman. So it's just like, <laughs> um, but uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah. So um, when we, when we have these thoughts and we sit with ourselves um, and, and we try, you know, I, I've had the same issue. Like I've had periods in my life where I've meditated and other times where I'm like, well, I don't have time for that. But sometimes for me, it's even just like, okay, I'm in the shower. 
I'm going to take a mm-hmm. five minute shower. I'm not going to turn on any music because that's another thing I do. But, you know, just even if that's the only time you get, I don't know what yeah. you say to that, but I say that that's a time when I'm completely alone with no distraction. You know, I, I think that there is, um, there is benefit to that too. I mean, there is like the whole thing you can read about like walking meditation, right? So it's, it's being, it's just being connected with ourselves. So sometimes I throw out the word meditation because it, it right away puts up like this block for people. Like I can't meditate. I don't have time for that. Um, so I just say it's a quiet connection with yourself. Like it's finding a space to be connected with yourself and listen, listen to everything that's that surfaces. And the more you do it, the more surfaces, like you said, like sometimes you're just writing and then all of a sudden you can look back and be like, well, that's a common theme. Like, mm-hmm. well, this keeps going up for me. Obviously this is something that my body is messaging me that I need to deal with. I need to put some focus in this area of my life. Sorry for that. That's okay. (laughs) Yeah. So that's often, that's often the first step because as we learn in the nursing process, you cannot implement any kind of changes or therapies unless you first assess what the problem is. Right. So (laughs) hate to bring it back to the nursing process, but really that's what it is. Figure out figure out what it is that's that's uh that's that thorn in your in your side figure out what mm-hmm. it is that you can do to make it better so then yeah. what? we listen we identify these things within ourselves that maybe we weren't listening to before mm-hmm. we, maybe for some people they would say well that just that just makes me feel worse because then i i think of all these things that i have that are my responsibility but then then what then what's the next step well i i mean there's two other steps that are not really um connected to that question but i would oh, say sure, but wherever no, you're gonna it, take it it's time, it's time to make a plan like so when we have awareness of something it's time to make a plan and if this is hard for you like if it's hard to set a goal and actually follow through that's where you need support that's where a coach is really a really beautiful asset to have because they i mean in my in the way i coach is not I don't just see you for an hour and then I'll see you again in a couple of weeks when we meet up again. Like we meet together, we create, we might hash through a little bit of the past, but really we're focused on what is it that you want and how are you going to get there? What are the steps that you need to take? And then who's going to support you to get you there? Because doing these kinds of things, like changing your life, it, it's, it's not always easy. So to have support in your corner, is one of the most important pieces, I think. And so I really feel like uh, my role as a coach, there's lots of different pieces, but um, one of them is to pull those answers out and to help you see where it is that you want to focus that attention and what kind of steps you'd like to make in order to get you there. And when they come from you, you're more likely to do them. If I say you should do this and this and this, that's just another person telling you how you should live your life, right? Mm -hmm. So when, but when the answers come from you, when I ask the right questions and I pull those answers out of you, to help you see where it is that you want to go in your life, where those gaps are, where you need to address some of your attention and your efforts. And then we create a solid action plan, looking at any barriers and creating a support network that can help you get there. Um, That's when you see lasting change. It's not, and it's a process, like it takes time too. I think a lot of, we can be very impatient with ourselves. Like I want this to change now because you're so full of it. Like you can't take it anymore. So you want it to change now, but unfortunately it didn't get to that point overnight. So it's not going to change overnight either. Right. Takes this long process of working through the layers. Uh, and that's really, you know, I, I like the analogy of the onion because every time I meet with people and every time we dig through something, it's like we're shedding back some of those layers and the deeper we get, the juicier they get, just like an onion, how it gets much more juicy. Mm -hmm. Go in the same with us, like the deeper that we get through, because sometimes the first time we meet, we're just really dealing with surface things. I mean, I've, I've dealt with laundry with people um, on those first sessions, but then as we keep digging and we keep creating these, these action steps towards the change that we want with that goal, whatever it is in mind, and it definitely will change. Um, then it, then it just, the layers get juicier. We start to dig through and, and come, come to some really sweet, deep places um, that really create the massive transformation that people are looking for. You're right. Could, and yeah, we do. We want, we want answers so quick. We want to fix things, but 
like the treadmill you don't you don't want to you don't want to get in shape uh and then expect that it's going to happen with just like a couple tries so yeah. yeah i think i think there's something to it and and as you get deeper you know you learn more about yourself and it, it becomes i think it becomes like this self-perpetuating process you know yeah you can't turn back once you start it's it's very difficult to turn back uh because you will constantly be met with challenges and roadblocks uh and i i mean i still am too like oh, yeah. on, on an ongoing basis I'm, I'm met with these challenges but when i'm really in the weeds this is maybe more tied to the things that are the other steps on my list but when i'm really in the weeds is like um to to think back where i came from and it's like i'm never going back i'm, I'm never going back there this may be challenging right now but that was hell and i'm not mm -hmm. going back so I have this really um what i i really love it i call it the canyon of hope and it's this uh analogy of what i feel like my journey has been and uh when i've you know when i've shared it with people it's moved a lot of people to tears and it still does like when i get to that other side and i put my hand on and, and i'll i can give you the link too if you want to share it with yeah with of your, course when i get to the other side and i put my hand on the other side of the canyon and i feel this overwhelming blanket of hope it's like this warm lightness that just is like anything's possible it's it's such a freeing feeling and so even when i every time i do it with a like with a live group it just it it overwhelms me with this emotion it's like we're not we're not stuck we don't have to stay where we are if, if something in your life is not good right now if something feels like shit to you you can change it it's not necessarily going to be easy but that's where i feel support is like uh it's it's so important because we you know when you go through a process of self-discovery and you're really looking within and changing things about your life you start to build these internal reserves like these internal strengths and supports uh, but when we have external support too it just helps us stay within that zone where we can just you know which is like resiliency really where we can meet these challenges and not get you know swept away with anxiety and worry and just go down that rabbit hole but we also you know, we don't get sucked down into feeling depressed and withdrawn and totally apathetic. Having support within, but also external, keeps us in this what we call in trauma practice in the in the zone of tolerance, where you can just really be able to manage things because you have all the tools. And uh, I, I I liken it to my canyons. It's like every challenge as you keep going is like a new it's a new canyon, mm -hmm. but they don't look possible. They don't look scary. They don't look, um, you know, like it's the end of the world. Like, oh my God, I have to go through it. It's actually exciting. It's like, I know that on the other side of this planet is going to be something freaking better. So mm -hmm. I can't through whatever it is that's coming. Absolutely. Yeah. So we talked about the first couple of steps in your kind of like four steps to reduce overwhelm. So we talked about just looking inside yourself, listening to yourself, and then kind of pulling all of that out, getting that out in form of journaling, whatever that looks like to you. Mm -hmm. what's, what's after that? Have we kind of touched on that or are we, or are we treading into something else here? Well, I think, it, I think the other two pieces, I mean, support is like the, the underlying foundation. Sure, sure. Sure, but. The other two pieces I think we can't leave out because uh, one of them is prioritizing you. And so this is, you know, the buzzword is self-care, but it's really, it's more about prioritizing what's important to you in your life and what makes you feel good. You know, not making decisions and doing things just to make other people happy um, or to follow in the path of what other people have created is um, what you should be doing in your life, right? Like all of these check boxes that we feel like we need to accomplish in our life. That's, that's like the shoulds that we follow and we don't necessarily do what feels right for us. Um, in my coaching, I talk about the yes and no path, which is just a very easy way of explaining um, and kind of uh, identifying how to lean into yes and how to lean into no, or not lean into no, because mm -hmm. no is what everybody else wants us to do. Like what, um, I shouldn't say everybody because a lot of people do promote this, you know, this yes lifestyle, but the no is, you know, the, I should go and do this. I should join this. I should like all these things that are heavy, heavily weighted. They, they feel negative. They feel draining. They feel low energy. Whereas your yes path is like, it's everything that feels light and exciting and happy and joyful and easeful. It's just like, I want to do that. That's what I want my life to be filled with. I truly believe that none of us are here in this world 
to live no i i truly believe that we're not supposed to be dragging ourselves every single day like struggling to get out of bed hating our life dreading every bit of it we're supposed to be excited so whatever that looks like for you you need to fall into it and i think it becomes revealed to you as you begin like as you start turning towards yes and you start doing things for yourself and prioritizing yourself then more and more becomes revealed that is on this yes path to the promised land which is like your destiny what you're here to do is to really live authentically expressed and just joyful and excited and um so i that's really i mean it's self-care is is you know like the the easy thing to say but it's it's about creating a life that is fulfilling to you that is happy and and excited and it all starts by just little small steps like what what's one thing you could do today that will make you feel good Mm -hmm. maybe going for a walk outside maybe it's setting your table maybe it's making your bed maybe it's having a shower and doing your hair right whatever it is do one thing a day and then as you do that i i think this has probably been one of the most pivotal things for me well there's so many but i think this is because when i really started to actually just do small things for myself it was such a huge shift because i had been doing nothing for myself mm -hmm. with three kids and a busy life and like looking after everybody else, which is typically like how women are trained, right? We're trained to look after everyone else and leave nothing for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when I started to chip away at that and start doing things for myself, it just, it snowballed. And now where I spend like a good chunk of my day doing everything <laughs> that feels good for me. So, and it actually, and sorry, and but it hasn't taken anything away from the other aspects of your life. It, it actually adds to them. Yeah. So that's where we get, we're so disconnected. We think if I spend time doing something for myself, if I lean into pleasure and yes in my life, it means I'm taking away from those other things that are important, like my children or my job or my family or whatever. And it doesn't, it makes you such uh, like a, just a way better person in those things. And you have so much more to give because you're, you're not full of the shit anymore. Mm -hmm. You're full of, things you feel amazing inside of yourself and so you want to spend time with your kids you want to play outside you want to have a long conversation with somebody who before maybe kind of just drag you down like it just changes the way that you show up in your life when you're showing up for yourself Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's even as simple as thinking about how do you interact with the people that you love when you're physically tired, when you haven't gotten enough sleep and you're hungry and your head hurts versus mm -hmm. when you're rested and you had a good meal and you feel pretty good today. So really it does get down to that. When you're doing things for yourself, the person that you are is showing up, you know, you, you, like you said, you're happier when you're spending that time with your kids. You can either spend 50 minutes being frustrated and burned out, or you can take those 15 minutes for yourself. And then yeah. the time you are spending with them is like happy and productive and like a good thing for everybody involved. And you're not just like, I wish I had five minutes to myself. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so much. Um, so le definitely leaning into the yes and prioritizing yourself is a, it, it's, I mean, we can't discount it. It's, it's such an important piece of overcoming anything in your life. Mm -hmm. And um, when I, when I think of overwhelm, I, I really think of more the, the mental and emotional side of it. And so, um, and because emotional and mental health was a big part of my journey, um, this last step is, it's critical we have been taught in in our culture and not just women men too to stuff our emotions that certain emotions are acceptable but only in certain amounts right like even joy if we are like extremely joyous about something it's not quite socially acceptable right so we are taught to temper ourselves and to stuff and so we have these experiences too i mean i would say just about every single person on earth has experienced some form of trauma and trauma is not the experience it doesn't mean you're in an earthquake or you were molested or whatever it is an experience it's the experience inside of your body so i mean as nurses we're exposed to so much trauma and we internalize this because we don't really have healthy a lot of us have healthy weight to process it and deal with it and so emotional expression and I, I just call this step feel it all is is so important um and so i have this whole list of tools that you know i i introduce to people 
in my coaching um, and in, you know, in my classes too, because I teach Kundalini yoga and that's a very cathartic, a very um, inward journey. It allows you to unlock different things inside of you and really um, express yourself and release things that are pent up and blocked because um, this emotional stuff, stuffing that we do, it becomes like an, almost like an entity that, that controls us. And so many people, you know, they, feel like they're out of control with their emotions like they're they're always angry or they're quick to be crying and they're sad all the time and it's because we've we've created all of these blockages inside of us by stuffing our emotions by not dealing with them health in a healthy way in that in that moment or in that you know very tight time frame of when that situation happened that created the emotion and so our the way we, you know, the way we exist in this universe is we're actually creating these scenarios, these situations that trigger those same things so we can deal with it. Mm -hmm. But we get triggered and we stuff it again. We get triggered and we stuff it again. It becomes like something inside of you, like almost like a physical mass mm -hmm. that starts to just destroy parts of us physically, mentally, and emotionally. And so feeling our emotions is, I mean, it's a huge topic. I could talk forever, but it's, um, we have to start somewhere. And so, I mean, quiet contemplation and journaling are, are ways to also, um, allow yourself to express what's going on inside of you, but, um, it has to also involve your body. And so this really ties into like embodiment practices. I'm sure you've heard of and uh, Kundalini is it's, that's my jam. That's, that's what I do. It's been so powerfully transformative in my life. And so now I teach it because I, you know, if something works for me, I'm like, I got to learn about it and I got to teach it because <laughs> if it works for me, it's going to work for other people. Um, but dancing is a really, mm -hmm. um, put on some music and just allow your body put on some sad music and just dance and cry put on some angry music like I always say like put on some limp biscuit and get a baseball bat and start beating something up yeah and just let it out um, and then put on something happy and allow yourself to be you know really happy or inspired or motivated or empowered whatever that word is for you mm -hmm. uh, one other thing too that's really powerful is shaking so have you ever, have you ever tried? Yes, I actually taught a friend about this. I was actually this, you're taking the words right out of my mouth. I was going to bring this up. <laughs> I had a friend do this. She lives in Colorado. We were on video chat. She was telling me about everything. And I was like, stop, stop. Let's just, let's shake it out. So yeah, please talk more about this. So, I mean, shaking is, it's a way for us to move energy. So, I mean, and that's really what Kundalini is too, is unlocking these energy channels and allowing us to move this energy through us because emotions are energy in motion. So if we have this energy moving through us, we have this sad event, something triggers us, we have this sadness moving through, but we don't allow it, we stuff it down. We've now like, we're trying, we're struggling now to keep this energy still like inside of us, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop. It's still going in there. It wants out. And so when we do practices like dancing and Kundalini and shaking, we're allowing that energy to move. And so, um, if you think about an animal that's been hurt or scared and they, they tremble right afterwards, they've, they've been scared. They sit there in the corner and they're just shaking. That's them in a completely biological, physiological way, moving that energy through them. And then they, they literally shake it off like nothing happened, right? They just continue on with their day. Whereas human beings, we don't. We experience something that's traumatizing to us or just like very heavily emotionally charged. We don't process it properly and we get stuck. And so then this energy stays within us and then we develop symptoms that are very uncomfortable to experience, like anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. uh, fear, hatred, anger. And so what do we do? Instead of feeling those things, we find behaviors to try to hide them, right? So we look to food, we look to booze, drugs, shopping, whatever it mm -hmm. is, something to try to buffer or to temper those emotions that are just simmering in there and want to be released. So doing a shaking practice is just a very conscious way of moving energy. So you can do it for, you know, a couple minutes a day. I recommend obviously um, to do it in an order. So like if you sit and you think first, like you sit and you experience first, just allow whatever wants to surface, like do that quiet contemplation that we talked about before, just allow whatever wants to surface to come up. And then get up and start jumping and just shaking 
and just shaking, shaking, shaking. You can put on a song if you want, like some really good drumming or something like that, that really gets you um, into that rhythm and just shake. And then sit again, maybe write, maybe do some of your journaling at that point and just see what comes out. Uh, but it's a very, like when you put it all together like that, just a, a very uh, releasing, a really amazing way to let go of some of that energy inside. And it's, you know, some people may think it sounds silly, but I, yeah. chal I challenge everyone that's listening because I've done this before. And sometimes, you know, if you're in public, you can't really do it. You're in a situation where maybe it's not socially appropriate, but like, it's, it's hard to, um, to be unhappy when you're doing a full body shake. And I've, yeah. like I said, I've done this with my friend and she was like, okay, mm -hmm, yeah. sure. But then by the end of it, we're both laughing. We're both physically much more loose. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it also, you know, I've been reading a lot about anxiety because I'm a terrible anxiety sufferer and have been for most of my life. And I'm trying this like cognitive behavioral therapy approach. But one of the things that I've heard people talk about is when you're anxious um, and, you know, your your body is sensing some kind of danger, your body senses something's wrong because, you know, there's that whole uh, sympathetic nervous system response, you know, dinosaur chasing you in the forest, heart rate kicks up, respiratory rate kicks up, digestion slows down, all these things that happen to us if we sense danger, but sometimes we feel this anxiety and there's no danger and our body doesn't know where this sense is coming from. So like changing that neural pathway of feeling danger. And one of the things they say is you have to get up and move. You have to convince your body that there's not danger here. And so that's mm -hmm. what I think about when I think of shaking, it's you saying to your body, like, it's okay. We're just going to shake it out. We're not in any danger. We're just going to take a minute to like work it all through. And so that's, that's what I've been thinking about as I'm sitting here listening to you talk about this. So I challenge everyone listening when this episode is over, take a minute and really shake it out. Get your arms going. No shame. Doesn't matter what you look like. We do it right now. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. You know, what's the best actually is if you can get up and you can oh, yeah. jump and jump and shake. Like it is the most strangest thing, right? My like, whole, com my whole computer. <laughs> yeah. If you get it, if you get it going. Yeah. And just let it go. <laughs> it's sitting. It is, uh, oh, it's such like, you feel good, right? I, I, I kind of feel like it's also like jumping on a trampoline. Like you cannot jump yeah. on a trampoline laughing and, and being smiley. Right. So, um, what's interesting about the anxiety too, is that it's, it's also an energy. It's this energy of fear. Um, and worry and you know all these things mm -hmm. and when you feel that surfacing inside of you i i feel like it's such a gift actually because when you can start to notice your symptoms when you start to notice that energy starting within you if you can catch it and not say i don't want to feel this i'm going to try and stuff it down and just sit there in this super discomfort and end up with a full-blown panic attack mm -hmm. just stand up and just move your body and allow that energy to move through you and accept it and just let it go, let it flow and just release it all. You'll feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And I mean, dozens of breath techniques too, you can incorporate into there. Um, yeah. So many, so many different tools, uh, that can be used for sure. Yeah. I, th I think that it's really important because like we've said already, we all know these things, you know, or we can read about these things or like hear about it and think, yeah, I don't know if that'll work, but we're not doing any of these things. And these things are practices, so we're not going to be perfect at them. But it's that thought of like, you know, say you want to do breathing techniques every morning when you wake up. Well, there may be some mornings that you wake up and you can't do it, whatever. There's an emergency first thing in the morning. You're not feeling, you know, there's some, some factor that prevents you. Well, you shouldn't just say, uh, well, I tried. That didn't go well. I'm done. Mm -hmm. These practices necessitate that we keep coming back to it and recognizing that it's imperfect. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you do Kundalini. What, is that what it's called? I wrote it down. Um, Kundalini. Yeah. So you do the Kundalini um, yoga and it's like, if you don't get your practice in that day, you don't say to yourself, well, well, it's ruined. It's over. You remember, you forgive yourself. Okay. Didn't get it done that day. Maybe didn't get it done a couple of days, but it makes me feel good. So I'm not going to abandon that. 
it. Yeah. And so we need to be kind to ourselves and forgiving in those days that we, we miss or those practices that we miss, but you just need to step right back on and, 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 you know, try again, start again. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a, such a self-defeating pattern we can get into is when we, you know, we say we want to do something, we do it, we like it, and then we miss it because life happens. And then we're like, oh, you know, then we start to beat up on ourselves. Like, oh, I'm a failure. I didn't do it. And then does that make you motivated to continue? No, it's like, that was a failure. I'm a failure. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to go eat those chips and watch TV. So it's like, instead, I love what you said, like, forgive yourself, catch yourself and just be like, okay, you know what? Today was a day, right? Mm -hmm. The day. And guess what? I'm being given a gift of another day. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, wake up, you can try again. Yeah. I, uh, I, I rarely miss a day with my Kundalini because uh, everybody, including myself, pays the price if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's and, happier when you get your practice. Every, uh, life is much better when mommy gets her time to do her thing. Yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. And think about how true that would be for all of us. Imagine if you could wake up and I feel the same way. I don't do yoga every day, but every time I have a lapse in the amount of time, you know, like I've, I haven't done it in a few days or a few weeks. And I think, why? I always, it, I love it. It always feels good. I always feel more chill afterwards. I feel proud of myself for doing something for me. And then, you know, I do that cycle of beating myself up. So that's, that's been my focus is just saying, Okay. I didn't do it for a week. Today's a new opportunity. So yeah. sounds silly, but we need to give ourselves these selves, these pep talks, um, because that's what creates practice into lasting habit, right? Like yeah. that's how you turn your goals into like what you do every day. This is just what I do every day. And yeah. then what a role model you're being for your kids when your kids see that like, Hey, mom gets 10 minutes of quiet time for herself and that's just normal and that's what we do and then the rest of the day is good you know okay. so yeah so many people say like i don't know how to get that time and i said just start just start doing it tell them that this is what your plan is i need this 15 minutes i'm gonna mm -hmm. like for your quiet time and your journaling or whatever you decide is the best way to use that not scrolling through facebook guaranteed mm -hmm. Um, so having those 15 minutes for you to do something for you, and I can guarantee you the more you do it, it becomes, they just know, they just accept it. Like kids are very, kids are especially like they, they like to see how it unfolds too, because they'll notice, well, oh, mommy's so much happier when she takes this time for herself. And they, you know, like my kid, my oldest is almost 10 and he'll say to me like, mom, did you do your yoga today? <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah good like calling me out like mom you're a little bit bitchy like did you, <laughs> did you get your 10 minutes I think you need to go take a time out mommy needs a time out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but how wonderful that you know that does become and then it becomes a practice that the whole family you know everybody's 10 minutes may look very different but yeah think about what kind of of overall habit forming you know what kind of an example that sets you know for um especially for the future as they grow up and develop their own good habits. Yeah. Yeah. It's win-win, win-win for the whole family. Yeah. In so many ways. So let's talk about how people find you, how people get in contact with you, whether they're interested in your services, they want to check out your Instagram, where, where are you at? Tell everybody. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Sandra Payne wellness, so it doesn't get any easier than that. Um, you can find me on Instagram uh, you can find me on Facebook too. I also have a group, um, that's, uh, like a free private group on Facebook called surviving nursing. And so the behind this group, like, and it's, so it's easy to find you, it's, it's private, but you just have to add yourself to the group. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been surviving nursing, but it, the intention behind that is to create community. Um, I know that, uh, a community of support when we are dealing with challenges is so beneficial to us. And it's been one of the most like, uh, it just feels like you have this net, like this, this net behind you, uh, of people that got your back, like they get it. So I created this group and every other week. So biweekly we're meeting on zoom 
and it's just an opportunity, you know, a, a bit of a formalized group, but, but not so, but a chance for us to share and not everybody is nurses in the group. Sometimes there are people that are not, but, uh, that surviving nursing group particularly is just for nurses. But I mean, the zoom call, sometimes there'll be, you know, past clients of mine or, uh, whoever has come across my path that is looking for support. I invite to those meetings. Cause I think, you know, yes, we're nurses and we can relate to one another when we're talking about nursing, but we're also people like we have whole other lives outside of nursing. Right. So, um, and those things, uh, carry common threads and common themes with, with everybody. Um, so I, uh, so those are my, my two main things. I do have a website. Uh, I don't send a lot of people there. Um, but you can go there. I do have also, <laughs> um, a group for my Kundalini. So this is, um, I, I teach every week locally, but, uh, I live stream it also. So people mm -hmm. that are not for the month of October, it's free to join. So you can get in that group and you can try out some of the practices. Um, the, the previous week videos are in there as well. So you can try them out for free. Um, coming in November, it'll be like, you have to register and then there'll be a, like a small fee just to attend the class, uh, live stream. So, but it's very, it's a very, uh, cathartic, uh, and every time I teach, it's not just, you know, we don't just get into the yoga. I do a little bit of, you know, I always incorporate some of my coaching, some of my, you know, my mindset work, asking yourself questions, um, digging deep, coming up, like what, what are your answers? What are like this weekend we're talking about your truth. And, uh, I mean, how many people need to <laughs> need to find some honesty about what is going on with them? Um, I'll tell, I'll just share one last thing as well. Sure. I, yeah. um, of course, I see clients one on one um, for coaching, but I have a workshop coming up next weekend on Saturday, on the seventeenth, and uh, it's called Nurse RX. It's like my signature uh, workshop. I've done it over weeks, but it, this is all jammed into one full day to hopefully try to accommodate different schedules um, and shift work and that. So, uh, so it's on the seventeenth. It's from ten till four um, Pacific time. So whatever that translates for you, uh, and I can send you the link. It's an event right that you can register register through it's a very like a very affordable workshop and something that I say every nurse I believe every every I believe actually every human being needs to see something like this needs to experience something like this but it's going to be a lot of letting go a lot of like kind of pulling through some of the stuff that we're hanging on to that negative maybe negative energy or those negative experiences and learning to let go and find forgiveness and then we're gonna once we shed some of those layers we're gonna really pull back into like what what brought us into this profession in the first place rekindle that passion and that fire for why we got into this and what is what is what is our yes in this life like what is it that we want to move towards and then working together um to create an actual plan for each person moving forward um as with some that's just like I talked about, like I do in my individual coaching, we'll be doing this as a group. Um, and as well, so many more things like it's going to be very full of, uh, of actual practice, some exercises we can do afterwards, and then some tools that we can incorporate on an ongoing basis to help keep us in that, uh, in that good zone. And then of course the support. That's afterwards. wonderful. I'm a sucker for actionable steps. Yeah. I yeah. That. I think that, um, by the time this episode airs, it will probably have been concluded, but I want okay. people to find you and bookmark you and like keep their eyes peeled for future events that you have because I really like the message that you have for us and the way uh, you're you're helping people kind of follow the path that you have that's brought you this like great practice and these great practices in your life yeah. so um, and it's not necessarily like and and this will happen again the workshop definitely will happen. yeah yeah um, like, I mean, I've, there's so many tools, right? Like there's no shortage of people you can access online to find their ways, their tools and their practices. And it's, um, so this is about what's worked for me and how I can introduce it to them. But also I think the bigger piece is me using these tools that I've learned to help people start to dig through what's inside of them. Um, we are so disconnected from ourselves. And so just in this external world that we've lost sight and we've lost connection with, with ourselves. And so I, that is really um, my biggest push is to help people get reacquainted with who they are and, want and where they want to go. And, and again, like, I mean, all those things that I've talked about, it's, it's all very tied to what I do. Yeah. 
That's wonderful. I really want to thank you for joining us and sharing all of this great information with me and my listeners. I'm going to link everything that we've talked about in the description and on the blog post, and you'll be able to find the blog post for the show on nursinguncensored.com. So I just want to remind everybody there's tons of great information there, including both the audio and this, the video version uh, that I've done with Sandra. So Sandra Payne, thank you so much for joining me. I've really enjoyed talking to you. I'm glad that I've finally broken the, um, the, northern, the northern border into Canada. So thank you for being my first uh, Canadian fellow North American guest. Oh, I appreciate that very much. You should be able to close the border, but they can't close it virtually, right? So. No. I'm so grateful to be here um, and for this opportunity to share uh, share with you and your audience uh, just all of these little insights and, and tips that I can that I can pull to help people uh, really make this the, the best life that they could possibly have. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And I always end every show by wishing everybody happy nursing. Mm-hmm. Happy nursing, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Happy nursing to you too. Thank you.